The Battle of Chichi was fought in 36 BC between the Han Dynasty and the Xiongnu chieftain Chichi Chanyu. Chichi was defeated and killed. The battle was probably fought near Taraz on the Talas River in eastern Kazakhstan, which makes it one of the westernmost points reached by a Chinese army. The Battle of Talas in C751 was fought in the same area. Chapter 1 Background In 56 BC Chichi revolted against his brother. As his brother grew more powerful, Chichi retreated westward. About 44 BC he made a close alliance with Kangju near Lake Polkash. Later he quarreled with the Kangju, killed several hundred of them and forced them to build him a fortress. The fort required 500 men and two years to build. It was probably located near Taraz. Chapter 2 Battle Chapter 2 Section 1 Assembly and March of Han Forces at approximately 36 BCE, the governor of the western regions was Gan Yanshou. His deputy commander, Chen Tang, claimed that Qi Qi was planning to build up a great empire and proposed a preemptive attack. Gan Yanshou objected, but he soon fell ill, and while he was incapacitated Chen Tang forged an edict in Yanshou's name and mobilized the army. Gan Yanshou was forced to yield. All this was done without the emperor's permission. An army of 40,000 Han and Hu troops assembled. It marched west on both sides of the Tarim Basin, reunited near Koshgar, and moved across Kangju territory reaching the western shore of Lake Balkash. At this point a party of several thousand Kangju cavalrymen, returning from a raid on Wusun, stumbled onto the rear of the Chinese army, attacked it, and made off with a large quantity of food and weapons. Chen Tang sent his Hu troops back and defeated the Kangju, killing 460 of them and freeing 470 Wusun captives. Chapter 2 Section 2 Battle at Chi Qi's Fortress Several Kangju nobles defected to the Chinese and provided information and guides. The Chinese encamped about 30 li from Chi Qi's fortress and the two sides exchanged rather hypocritical messages. They then moved to within 3 li of Chi Qi and fortified themselves. The Xiongnu sent out several hundred cavalry and infantry, but they were driven back into the fort. The Chinese followed, and attacked the fort and managed to burn part of the wall. That night several hundred Xiongnu horsemen tried to escape, but all were killed. Chi Chi himself thought of escape, but decided to remain because he knew that he had too many enemies in the surrounding country, and fighting continued. Chi Chi's queen and concubines shot arrows from the ramparts. Chi Chi was wounded in the nose by an arrow. Shortly after midnight the outer walls were breached and the Xiongnu retreated to the inner citadel. At this point several thousand Kangju horsemen appeared and attacked the Chinese in the darkness but were unable to accomplish anything. When dawn broke parts of the inner citadel were on fire. The Chinese piled dirt on the citadel walls and clambered into the citadel. Chi Chi and a hundred or so warriors retreated into the palace. The palace was set on fire and attacked from all directions and Chi Chi was mortally wounded. Chapter 3, Aftermath 1518 Xiongnu died, including Chi Chi and Chi Chi's wives. 145 were captured and well over 1000 surrendered. The soldiers were allowed to keep their booty, and the surrendered Xiongnu were distributed to the 15 kingdoms that participated in the battle. The following spring Gan Yanshou and Chen Tang arrived at Chang'an and presented Emperor Yuan of Han with Chi Qi's severed head. It was displayed on the city wall for ten days and then buried. Chi Qi was the only Xiongnu Chanyu killed by the Chinese. Chapter 4, Hypothetical Sino-Roman Contact A hypothesis by the Sinologist Homer H. Dubbs according to which Roman legionaries clashed with Han troops during the battle and were resettled afterwards in a Chinese village named Lycian, has been rejected by modern historians and geneticists on the grounds of a critical appraisal of the ancient sources and recent DNA testings of the village people. However, 
This hypothesis has been supported by Lev Gumeli of Dot A New Hypothesis from 2011 by Dr. Christopher Anthony Matthew from the Australian Catholic University suggests that these strange warriors were not Roman legionaries, but hoplites from the Kingdom of Fergana also known as Alexandria Exchator Deon, which was one of the successor states of Alexander the Great's empire.